I would like to be more intentionable. Intentionable. <laughs> That's not that funny. Don't get me wrong, this is not one of those videos where I learn how to wake up at 5 a.m. and become the most productive person in the history of productivity. I hate alarms. I used to have to go to classes where I would get up at 5.30 in the morning in order to get to campus on time. I will never do that again unless forced to. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Emily, and though I will not be getting up before the sun, I would like to be more intentional about the time that I spend writing and the amount of time I spend on my homework. I have always been someone who writes in the evening, but I have also been extremely bad at writing while I've been in university at college. So. How's that working out for me so far? Good job, Emily. So I figured it was time to try a bit of a different writing routine. My optimum plan here was to write for a minimum of one hour, maximum of two hours, in the morning on the work week. School work week, whatever. Before I turn on the internet, before I eat breakfast, before I attempt to work on my classes at all, Hopefully I can carry over the momentum of writing into school because getting started with homework in the morning was always a huge weakness for me. Hopefully this will make me more excited to actually get up in the morning and do things. There is also the secondary plan of doing all of my homework throughout the work week and actually getting it done so that I can have weekends free to do whatever, more writing, videoing, video editing, other small things that I didn't get to during the week because school smacked me over the head. Weekends are not something I usually have during the quarter. So with the exception of group projects, because you can never really plan the time of your other group members, I will be trying to get things done and have my weekends free. This is ambitious and I didn't know how it was gonna go. If you're skeptical, so was I. I took two weeks to do this. I also started a little journal where I was blocking out areas of time. I think I'm going the wrong direction. Yes, I am. Blocking out areas of time for my writing sprints down at the bottom and seeing how long everything I was doing in school was going to take. There's two weeks worth of this, actually more now because I'm recording it after I was done. So here's how it went trying to become a morning writer and being productive at school. Day number one was a Tuesday. Yes, I started on Tuesday because obviously being disciplined is not my greatest strength, but Tuesday was excellent and it should have been because I just started. After a little more than writing a thousand words in the morning, I did a little bit more than five hours of homework and two hours of video editing throughout the day. So yeah, productivity. On day two, I did not intend to get up early, but I woke up at 7 a.m. and remembered that Kate Cavanaugh, one of my favorite author tubers, was hosting a live write-in at 7.30 in the morning because she is on a totally different time zone than me. I've always wanted to join in one of her live streams, so I woke up at 7 and I was like, I should stay awake, get my butt out of bed, and do a little writing sprint. I got a little over a thousand words before coffee. Homework was a lot of busy work. Let me tell you, I have this one class. So much busy work. All the little assignments add up and I ended up doing a little over six hours of homework. Brain dead, head empty. Day three was the beginning of October. Wow. It was a Thursday. I got over 1,500 words that day, just a little bit over, which is an excellent word count for the morning, especially for me. But I was so burnt out on doing homework for so many hours the past two days that I spent the most of Thursday trying to convince myself to work on the bigger project that I had and didn't actually get to it until the evening. At this point, I sort of started to realize a great thing about this time tracking thing. It was encouraging me, actually. It helps me realize how much work I am actually putting into school. Sometimes I can get a lot done in the day, but my stupid brain is like, no, you didn't do enough and we're going to be sad and grumpy now. So I can take this thing and smack my brain with it and be like, no, I did hours of homework and also I did writing. So on Thursday when I didn't do a lot of stuff, but I did eventually get to the project I was avoiding, I could still look back at the past two days and be like, I worked my butt off and that's helpful and it's motivating. It was also at that point on Thursday that I decided to start tracking how much social media I was doing each day. 
That day I spent an hour on TikTok because it's my go-to avoiding school app. Day four I had another realization, which was that sometimes I think homework takes like four to five hours to do, but it only takes me one or two or three hours and it just feels like it drags on forever because it lives in my brain for so much longer before I actually get to doing it. It also made me realize how much time video editing takes. Yikes. It's a really good thing I love this channel and doing these videos so much because it takes a lot of time. That was Friday. My weekend was a bust. <laughs> it went mostly like this. Uh... I wrote a few hundred words but it was really forced and I didn't try to continue on with my sprints that I've been doing in the morning. After working on both school and writing with so much intensity over the week, I got up on Saturday and just noped out. My brain was dead. I did the bare minimum. It also didn't help that I got a group assignment last minute that loomed over my head the entire weekend. So I did not hit my goal of not having homework over the weekend and I didn't really have the desire to do anything creative over the weekend, but my work week had been so productive and I had written more over the work week than I would have normally even on the weekends. So it's not what I was going for, but it was definitely getting there. Which brings us to week two, also known as the uh, week I tried to do voice to text on an app on my phone and got totally sucked into that and kind of ignored my word count for Milwardy or at all. <laughs> voice to text is so fun. It is so fun. I would do it more often if the typos weren't the most horrendous things I've ever seen in my life and if my phone could actually interpret the names of my characters. I once narrated 800 words on a 15 minute walk with my dogs. But I am telling you the typos. It, it is astounding what this phone thinks I am trying to say. It puts down sentences that make no sense. And I'm like, how did you think I said that? I don't care though. I really love it. And I'm going to try to do it more often because I can sit outside in the mornings with my dogs drinking coffee, narrating into my phone. Yes, I have to spend an inordinate amount of time fixing typos. So I'm gonna try to find a way to work around that. <laughs> So on week two, I spent over 27 hours doing homework, which actually feels low. I feel like I'm doing school all the time. I also spent over eight hours on social media. Yikes. Some of that, in my defense, is when I like to watch author tube videos while I'm doing school at the same time. So I do that a lot. And I wrote and or narrated over 6,000 words. We're going to ignore those uh, social media hours. I have never had a quarter at university where I could write 6,000 words in a week with ease. Mornings might be my thing. The weekend for week two was a bit like the weekend before, but that was mostly due to the fact that I got to a point in the novel where I was a little stuck and I wanted to take a day or two to try to work through my thoughts and actually figure out where I was going before I continued to write. So final thoughts on becoming a morning writer or at least attempting to, and trying to get all my homework done during the work week. This is so much better than any other writing plan I have ever had at university or college. I feel dumb that I thought it up in my last quarter. I love that I truly felt productive in the mornings, especially when I was writing a thousand words in pretty much under an hour. I did end up burning out on the weekends, which is something I wasn't really expecting. But honestly, as long as I'm being as productive with my writing as I am over the work week, I am fine with being less productive and relaxing a little bit on the weekends. I can take a break and do a bunch of little things on the weekend and that's perfectly fine. So this was a hugely fun experiment and as the fact that I am now filming this a week and a half after I finished this experiment, I can confirm that I have continued to do this writing schedule in the mornings and tried to get all my homework done on the work week. It's working super well. I haven't actually gotten to a point where I've had no assignments over the weekend because that's just how taking 15 units of school is. But my writing productivity has gone through the roof compared to my other qu quarters at university. Like I said, I am a dummy for not having thought of this like three years ago. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're a morning or an evening writer or if you just do whatever you want or if you have been trying to switch up your schedules because you're stuck at home. 
like me. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and ding that little notification bell and if you give my video a big thumbs up that really helps out my channel. I upload videos on Mondays or Fridays and I will see all of you guys in the next video. Bye!